And we're back with another week of predictions. I love this shit. Did you, I mean, who can't love this shit? Who can't love this sport when you watch a card like UFC 291 and you see the magic unfold in MMA? It's beautiful. There's really no sport like it. And this week we've got Sanhagen versus Font, which is an awesome fight night card. One of the best fight night cards I've looked at all year. Before we get into that, though, let's talk about the stats. 319 UFC fights. 203 dubs, 116 L's, 64% win rate, and 15 main event picks correct to 11 incorrect. So I'm doing decent this year. I'm not doing as good as I hoped. I wanted to be around the 70% range, but you know what? We'll end up there, hopefully by the end of the year. Let's start with the first fight of the night. Ode Osborne taking on Asu Almaboyev. I'm sorry if I butchered that, bro. I'm going with Asu. He is debuting in the UFC. He has a solid record. He's Honestly, the definition of a can crusher, I'm not even going to lie to you. But Ode Osborne isn't that great. And I feel like even though Ode Osborne's going to have success in this fight, in my opinion, it's probably going to be mainly a striking match. I think he's going to lose a split decision. I don't know why. I just have a gut feeling. I've been having a feeling ever since I've looked at this fight a couple days ago originally. Asu is pretty good at striking on the feet. He's good at pressure. He has a lot of power in his hands. So I'm just going to trust him and get, that, get the job done. Sean Woodson versus Dennis Bazookia next in the featherweight division. Sean Woodson is basically the Jalen Turner of featherweight. He's just a straight weight bully. He's 6'2 at featherweight, which is dumb. And he looks super fragile. Every I don't know, something about his legs and his build. It just looks like if he fights somebody that's like ranked in the top 15, that's like a strong hitter, they're going to fucking break his shit. I don't know. I just have like a weird feeling every time I'm watching him fight. But, for, but he's really good at skating by on a decision using his range and like poking at people. And I feel like he's going to be able to get the job done against Dennis Bazooka, who, it, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think he is, this is his debut in the UFC. So yeah, I'm going to trust Sean Woodson. Moving on up the card, Cody Durden taking on Jake Hadley. This is a sick fight for Flyweight. I love this fight. Cody Durden impressed me a lot with his pressure grappling in his last fight. It was like reminiscent of uh, Colby Covington, like a little mini Colby Covington. He's a little mean fucker. And he has decent hands, but I don't think they're as good as Jake Hadley's. I don't think he has the same finishing potential as Jake Hadley. Jake Hadley only has one loss in his career, and when you watch him fight, you can tell why. He's also a mean little fucker, and I feel like he's going to be able to find a TKO on Cody Durden within two rounds. I don't know. I just have a gut feeling. I don't think Cody's wrestling is going to be able to get the job done, and I think he's going to start panic wrestling once Jake Hadley opens up with the body shots and starts really hurting him on the feet. I'm going Jake Hadley TKO. Moving on up the card, Billy Quarantillo versus Damon Jackson. I just want to point out real quick, no female fights on the card, no WMMA until the co-main event, and it's actually a solid fight. We need more fight nights like that, bro, because look at the pacing of this card is just awesome. Billy Quarantillo versus Damon Jackson. Great featherweight fight. I feel like Damon Jackson is just probably over the hill. He had a good run in the UFC because he was really getting cherry picked some of the, like the best fights for him i'm not even gonna lie whether it was on purpose or just due to circumstance doesn't really matter that's what the reality of it was and then he fights someone like danny gay and he gets pieced up and i think billy Quarantillo has the counter style matchup for damon jackson because they're both like pressure uh boxer grapplers but billy Quarantillo is younger and he has a little bit more pop on his punch so i'm going billy Quarantillo by a decision next up in the card jeremiah wells taking on carlson harris I was really high on Carlson Harris when he got picked up on uh, looking for a fight, that one channel that Dana has on YouTube or that like series he has, and I was really high on this guy because he came into the UFC super old and he still showed out with like some really solid grappling. He got a tough matchup against Shavkat Rachmanov, and uh, you know, that's tough. Anybody fighting Shavkat is going to have a hard time, but against somebody like Jeremiah Wells, who's a little bit smaller of a grappler, I feel like he could actually do well in this. I'm going to side with Jeremiah Wells just because he's 4-0 in the UFC so far. So I've just got to like trust the momentum. And I've also picked him before pretty much every time, and he's gotten it done. So I'm going to trust Jeremiah Wells, but this one could be really close. Don't count Carlson out. Finally, at the top of the prelims, we've got Kyler Phillips taking on Howney Barcelos. This is a fucking sick fight. Great bantamweight fight. And in a parallel universe, if these fighters did a little bit better or stayed a little bit more active, they would be the main event of this card, which is crazy. Uh... Howdy Barcelos absolutely could get the job done on the feet. Uh, I don't know about on the ground. I feel like Kyler is just levels above him. But on the feet, he absolutely could get the job done. It's like a pick him on the feet. Kyler Phillips is wild. 
unpredictable on the feet. He throws crazy shit, amazing combos. But I think he knows that he needs to go into the grappling to get this one done, just to play it safe. You don't want to fuck around on the feet with Howdy Barcelos. I'm super high on Kyler Phillips. If you guys have watched my Gladiator Guide series, I made a video on Kyler already, and he's only even had like a couple fights in the UFC. So that just goes to show you how high I am on him. Because if you look at the rest of my, uh, my my videos in the series, they're all like champions or people that have had long careers. Kyler is somebody that's going to be one of the greats at Bantamweight. I have a strong feeling of that. He needs to play this one smart, chase the grappling, and go for a submission. And I'm going to trust him to do that. I don't think he's going to get one, but I think he's going to win a decision by mixing in the grappling. Moving on into the main card, we've got Ignacio Bahamundes taking on Ludovic Klein. Another great fight. Like Again, every fight on this card so far is solid. The momentum build is pretty good. This is my only complaint is I feel like this one should have been on the prelims and Kyler Phillips and Howdy maybe should have been on the main card. Jeremiah Wells could have been the prelim headliner. Something along those lines. But regardless, this is a great fight. I'm going to go with Ignacio Bahamundes because he's younger. He's... He's just so confident when he's in there striking on the feet. And I've always felt like Ludovic Klein was kind of overrated. Um, I feel like he's a bit chinny and he doesn't really have the same heart that even somebody like a young fighter like Ignacio Bahamundes has already shown he has. I, I love watching that spinning heel kick highlight, by the way, because I watched it live. So it just it adds to it for me. Next, up, we got Tanner Boser versus Alexa Kammer in the light heavyweight division. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Alexa Kammer is like Stipe Miocic's pal or like training partner or something along those lines. Something like that. And that's why he was like propelled into the spots he was in uh, earlier in his career. I remember seeing this kid getting good spots on Fight Night cards way back when I was uh, watching the UFC and not making videos on it. But yeah, in this fight, honestly, I would pick Tanner Boser when, if it came down to like skill and, you know, who has been tested more in the UFC. But his chin is just it's gone now and now that he's at light heavyweight i don't know i, I still don't trust it i think alexa camera is going to find the knockout moving on up the card diego lopez versus gavin tucker okay i know everyone's picking diego lopez because he really showed himself in his fight against uh mavzar evlov where he was supposed to just get mopped but he honestly could have he almost won that fight at certain points with submissions it was crazy but I'm still going to pick Gavin Tucker. Y'all must have forgot who Gavin Tucker was. I know he got flatlined by Dan Ige in like a second, which is fucking crazy to watch that live. And he hasn't fought since for whatever reason. But he was he was one of those people to look at as like, oh, he might be a menace in the featherweight division moving forward. And I still feel like he can be that menace. And judging by the fact that Diego Lopez likes to strike more than he likes to grapple, I think Gavin Tucker can use a neutralizing wrestling game and win a decision. Moving on to the future fight of the night. Dustin Jacoby taking on Kennedy Nizuchukwu, another amazing fight. I know I've just been preaching to the choir about that, but like you need to when they put together great fights because sometimes they have fucking Holly Holm versus Bueno Silva as the main event. So Dustin Jacoby has the style to keep Kennedy at range, but he, Kennedy has this like, I'm going to find a way to win factor about him. I don't know what it is. He has this like comeback factor. Like in like three of his fights in the UFC already, he was losing bad almost on the brink of getting finished and then he comes back and finds the win and it's usually finding the finish too he just breaks people and i feel like dustin jacoby after his fight with azamat merzikhanov figured out that he's never going to be in the top five or be a champion not in this division so i'm gonna trust kennedy nizuchikwu to find his shots and uh probably get him out of there with a submission but by almost tkoing him if you get what i'm saying like he's gonna hurt him bad on the feet Get him up against the cage or something with some knees, something along those lines. And once Jacoby drops down, maybe he'll chase a sub or maybe the ref will just pop in and be like, you know, I've seen enough. Now, don't get me wrong. There is a path to victory for Jacoby. Like I said, he has the style on the feet to like pick at range. But I just don't think that he's going to be able to do that against somebody that's young and hungry like Kennedy. So I'm trusting Kennedy. Moving on, co-main event of the night. The only WMMA fight on the card, Jessica Andrade versus Tatiana Suarez. Jessica Andrade is one of my favorite fighters, and Tatiana Suarez is an undefeated female prospect that's actually been tested in the UFC, didn't just come in and then lose her O instantly like we've seen time and time again this year. So I honestly, I, I'm not mad at this at all as a co-main event. I think this is a great fight. You can never count Jessica Andrade out. I'm sure everybody knows that, that watches the sport. You just can't. She's a beast. She's a little fucking tank of a woman, and she has so much power in her hands. Regardless of the weight class, she'll fuck you up. But Tatiana Suarez is so much bigger than her, and she is the style nightmare matchup for somebody like Jessica Andrade. 
just a grapple heavy. I'm gonna take you down, lay on you, look for a sub, and I think she's gonna find it. So I'm going Tatiana. Moving on into the main event of the night, Corey Sandhagen taking on Rob Font. This is such a good main event, but let's be real, guys. It's not it's not anywhere near the main event that we were hoping for, which is Corey versus Umar. Corey taking a fucking huge risk fighting somebody that was like 10 ranks below him in the rankings, in the official rankings at Bantamweight, which is consensus most stacked division in the UFC at the moment. Corey is such a fucking G for that, and it made the stakes of this fight so much bigger. But then, of course, Umar pulls out and ruins the fucking card. Nah, I'm playing, I'm playing. He didn't ruin the card, but like it really does kill the hype a little bit. But I'm glad Rob Font stepped in, so we still have a great main event. And Rob Font's a beast, dude. He's great on the feet. I think that in the first and the second round, he's probably going to show have a good showing. But I think as the momentum builds and as time goes, each 30 seconds in the octagon, you don't want to be an extra 30 seconds in the octagon with Corey Sandhagen. You feel me? He's going to start picking up speed. He's going to start finding his rhythm, picking up shots, mixing him up with the grappling. And he's a better grappler than Rob Font, in my opinion. So if he wants to, he could just take it to the wrestling and win the whole fight just using that alone. Corey Sandhagen, in my opinion, is top five striker in the UFC and top five mind in the UFC. So I ride really high on Corey. It's hard to pick against him against almost anybody in the entire division. There's a couple matchups that are like kind of a counter for him. And even then, I'd still probably side with Corey just because he's such a G. Now, there is a path to victory for Rob Font if he's super, super precise about sticking to a game plan, game plan, I'm sorry, using his jab, using his leg kicks, trying to be aggressive with the wrestling, making sure that he shuts that shit down when Corey starts changing stances and firing to the body, to the head, mixing up the takedowns. You have to shut it down instantly so Corey doesn't get confident with it. Because the second he gets confident, it's almost impossible to, roll, to slow that roll down. It becomes an impossible avalanche. And uh, I, I wouldn't trust most bandit points to fight that. So I'm picking Corey. If you guys enjoyed the video, enjoyed my rapid picks, I know it's kind of like a faster pace, but that's just the style of me. Then uh, give me a sub, give me a like, all that. I'll catch y'all.